In this lesson, we'll continue our review of Math Test 7, Section 3, you know, Calculator Questions 9 and 10. So getting a little bit deeper into the section, remember at 15, in theory, is the hardest problem solving, and then difficulty level resets for the grid ends. Question 9. Marissa needs to hire at least 10 staff members for an upcoming project. The staff members will be made up of junior directors who will be paid $640 a week, and senior directors who will be paid $880 per week. Her budget for paying the staff members is no more than $9,700 per week. She must hire at least three junior directors and at least one senior director. Which of the following systems of inequalities represents the condition described if X is the number of junior directors and Y is the number of senior directors? So really a bulky question, lots of information. This is a common question type on the new SAT where if to set up these inequalities, you don't have to solve it. We know that X is the number of junior directors and Y is the number of senior directors. And one phrase before we solve this problem, I just want to remind you, this we've seen on previous tests, but the phrase with inequalities I want you to keep a lookout for is at least, and we also want to look for no more than. All right, just remember at least, even though I think students might think about this and least sounds like less than and you're inclined to put a less than or equal, but at least means that amount or greater. So at least is greater than or equal. Just remember that. It's sort of counterintuitive, I guess, um, but just remember at least is not less than or equal. It's that number or greater, greater than or equal to. And no more by that same concept is it cannot exceed, and so that's less than or equal. So if you just remember those two phrases, I think it'll really help you out for these types of questions. All right, and so let's just do these and just find the different ones, and we can hopefully narrow it down. So we know X is the number of junior, Y is the number of seniors, and let's take a look at the first inequality. She has to hire at least 10 staff members. All right, so that's X plus Y. And it's at least, so remember, at least means greater than or equal to. So right away, we know that it's got to be x plus y is greater than or equal. So this is out because of this one, right? This one is good, so we're still good for b. Let's take a look at c and d. c is good, too, because it's greater than or equal, and d is out. So this is a way you can really kind of narrow it down. Now we're down to just two choices. So let's look at the next inequality. She must hire at least three junior directors and at least one senior. Again, at least means greater than or equal. So the junior director's three has to be greater than or equal. The senior director at least has to be greater than or equal to one. So if you look at, we already had it down to B and C previously. These are both greater than or equal to. Junior directors greater than or equal to three, senior greater than or equal to one. This works. This is already out. So again, if you're looking for shortcuts, you could see right away it has to be what B. Let's just take a look at the last one. This is the amount of money. No more. Now, no more means less than or equal to. So this is the amount of money that has to be paid. X is the number of junior. Y is the number of senior. And we have the salaries for each, 640 for the junior, 880 for the senior. No more is greater than or equal to, I'm sorry, less than or equal to, the answer is B. And so kind of a bulky question, just pay attention and remember these two phrases and the answer here is B. And number 10, we have this polynomial in the equation above A, B, and C are constants. If the equation has roots, negative one, negative three, and five, which of the following is a factor, of this polynomial. So this is really, these are specific words of art that have very special meanings. So the word root is the same as a solution. These are the zeros of the equation. And so if you think about it, when you're solving, let's say a quadratic or a polynomial, and then you factor it, and let's say you get a factor of x minus six right? X minus six would be a factor of the equation, but the solution 
would be x equals 6, right? It's where it equals 0. So just keep this in mind. If x equals 6, we're told this is a solution, that means x minus 6 is a factor. And so they're telling us that it has roots of negative 1, negative 3, and 5. So these, again, are solutions or roots, negative 1, negative 3, and 5. And so we know that the factors are going to be x plus 1. We know it's going to be x plus 3 and x minus 5. And if you look at the choices, the only one that has any of these is this one. Right? We don't have an x plus 3, we have an x minus 3, we don't have an x minus 5, we have x plus 5. And so if you just remember, this is not a hard question at all, but you just have to understand this terminology. Factors, roots, and solutions. Just keep that in mind.